Yeah, so leading up, I think, I mean, do you know what? Sometimes when people, I've always thought if I get asked this question, how far do I take it back to, to actually get people to understand that the influence to actually make the music I was making at that time was probably way back to like, you know, me being like, I've got a big, my brother up, and if he ever watches this, my brother Justin, he, he had a pair of uh, turntables in the attic. And back then, obviously, we were spinning tunes like it was oh, terrible. Well, not terrible, but it was definitely far from hip hop. He wasn't really into hip hop. But I think he, we had a microphone. So that was like the kind of first time I ever picked up a microphone and heard my voice back. And him being the older brother, I'd sometimes sneak up there when he went back from school, switch the decks on, switch the mic on. Um, but to be honest, I've got to go back before that. When I was in middle school, me and my friend wrote a rap song in our music class and i'm sure it was called king of the ring or something it was probably now you know it's one of them cringy moments if someone played that back i'm glad there wasn't camera phones and room for things in that era because it probably would have been cringy but i think the like you said the influence came from way before then in terms of music and then i think by the time i met yourself at that job and you did some of our artwork and i was kind of probably giving you some of the music it was more that i found the kind of sound that I liked doing with a friend and by myself, but more so forming our group, the Anecdote Authors. We really established the sound. And I think one thing you commented on when we gave you the mixtape was that, do you know what? You guys don't sound like everybody else, but you don't, and, but, but not in a bad way. That was, I think, what most people said. And I think, you know, I'm not naive enough to know that the quality of the recordings and stuff like that was probably not great then. It probably weren't the worst, but that's always kind of got better. And, but like I say, I, I was into, I always like to give this thing of like, people don't see me as like, I was I was seven, eight listening to hip hop. I probably wasn't. I was seven, eight in listening to like Oasis, Blur, and loads of indie bands and, you know, the stuff you get fed to you on the TV and the radio. And obviously back then times, we were going in HMV and buying CDs. Start going to school. Uh, then friends would introduce me to their music eventually and say like upper school so years maybe 9, 10, 11 but at that point there like I say the run up to that was really me and probably the best way to explain it as well is a lot of experimenting in music like not even finding the sound that you and not even knowing what kind of sound you know and, and like you said there I think it was a a lot of people do say how are you not like a full time artist and stuff like that and I think it, back in them days, it was very different to like even the marketing process, getting yourself out there. It was like word of mouth back then. It was you had to turn up, give flyers out, you know, give your mixtape out. So it was a very different era. So it's, it's almost we always say this, me and the older, we sound like some bitter older. It's like the younger guys have it too easy. <laughs> now you probably think that with some of the podcast stuff and the gaming is like they have it so easy. Like if you ever did something like this back then, it was it was it was more like you had to really be out there. Do you know what I mean? Not you know on the internet's great because you can push stuff, but I think as well meeting people and then getting a feel for like what music you do even meeting yourself and watching you draw i wouldn't have known that through the internet you may have told me you draw but you know what i mean that essence of seeing it actually like wow like that is amazing bro like we need some artwork like what are you doing